great to see everybody. Glad that you're here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, there's probably half and half. Some <clears throat> here don't care, don't even know it went on, but some of us still uh, have white knuckles from the basketball game <laughs> last night. But uh, at least if you're a uh, Virginian, maybe you're excited that uh, Virginia won. We don't say that often. And uh, they're in the, the final game Monday night. So uh, maybe for some of us, it's been a uh, kind of a, a heart, uh, heart palpitating weekend. But I'm glad we can come here this morning to just uh, take some moments out of our week, take some moments out what may even be a busy day today, and just uh, worship God for the great things he's done for us. And uh, he's deserving of our gathering together. And I'm so glad we can, we can be together this morning. Well, maybe you heard with Alan speaking this morning, doing the announcement, and, and you probably realize sometimes it sneaks up on us, but we're only two weeks away from Easter Sunday. Two weeks from today is Resurrection Sunday. Uh, many of us, I hope all of us and some more will be here uh, in our uh, Easter, maybe some new Easter clothes or... Uh, or at least uh, dressing our best and looking forward to a great day. I hope we have some wonderful, beautiful weather. Uh, and so as we finish up this week, two weeks before Easter, we've been talking about uh, the disciplines of the disciple of Christ and what are those things that we need to be doing, what are those habits we can be doing that really help us not only grow in Christ, but allow Jesus to be the very center of our life, that it's the other things of life that center around our relationship with Christ rather than something else in the middle. And I think sometimes when we get something else in the center of our life that our world focuses on, that's when we can get into some real problems. And that's when life, uh, life's always difficult, but it's much harder to to manage than if Jesus is in the middle. So that's what we're trying to do. So today we explore the last of the disciplines, and that discipline is we're going to talk about our discipline of witnessing to the world, sharing our faith. So nobody run out of here on me yet, all right, because I know that's not a, an easy one sometimes for us to talk about. And in fact, I, I think witnessing or sharing our faith sharing our love of Christ with others may be uh, the most, uh, the discipline that most Christians know they should be practicing, but probably the discipline that many of us have the greatest anxiety over, the greatest fear over, the, uh, or maybe the greatest indifference over. And many times we're just not doing it, we're not sharing on a regular basis. And there's a lot of reasons for that, and I know that when you, when you talk to others or maybe in some small groups or in your home, you talk about are you sharing your faith, you know, there is certainly a, a fear of rejection if we do that. We don't want to share Christ because we just kind of fear what others are going to say and they're not going to like us. There's the fear of not fitting in. Uh, there's uh, the fear of appearing judgmental in our culture and day gosh everybody you know we and they do everybody in our country has a right to believe and maybe it's an area we don't want to tread in we don't feel like we should tread in um maybe we feel like if we if we share our faith and let others know we're a christian we're we're somehow being culturally insensitive and on and on you know there are those things that make us a little shy about sharing jesus but you know statistics show and these are taken from surveys of those who are unfamiliar with Jesus, who are unfamiliar with the scripture in our own country. And uh, they, the surveys kind of ask, um, you know, how would you feel? What do you experience when a Christian comes and wants to talk to you about their faith or that topic comes up or uh, they invite you to their church. And, and really, the responses, the, the, the higher percentage responses are pretty amazing. Uh, just two or three of them 
uh, many people say, you know, I wish someone would invite me to a Bible study. Uh, I find the Bible interesting, fascinating, although I don't know a lot about it, I'd like to know more about it. I wish somebody would just invite me to study or, or just learn about the Bible. Uh, others would say, well, you, uh, they say, yeah, I'm more likely uh, than not to go to my friend's church if they would ask me. If they would just say, hey, you want to come to church one Sunday and experience and see what it's all about? The majority of people say, yeah, we're more likely to do that than not do that. Or, um, I am interested, so many people say, and I'm not turned off by other people's spiritual beliefs, and to me it's a learning experience, and I'd like to hear what people really believe. I'd like to hear them share that with me. That's really not the, that, and I think in our minds and our hearts, that's not the responses that we think people are thinking, is it? We kind of think, oh man, they're just thinking I'm a wacko. <laughs> you know, they're thinking, you know, they're just not going to, you know, even like me if I let them know I'm a, a Christian and what that means to my life. But really, people are interested and they're welcoming usually to have those conversations. So, what does Scripture say about this discipline of sharing our faith? And can we gain a little bit of motivation? Can we gain a little bit of courage to practice it more in our life? And maybe if you're here and you're kind of deciding about Christianity, you're deciding about faith, you're wrestling with, with who Jesus is for you, many of these passages and what we're going to say today will speak to you too. So, so listen to, to see if, if Christ is asking you to to ask him in your heart to make him the center of your life. And I think that can work as well. Well, the first thing I think Scripture would say is that the disciple who really desires to allow Christ to be the Lord of their life, will you're just going to naturally desire this, this uh, feeling within you, this urge to share Christ with others. It's going to become more natural than you think. Jesus calls it fruit-bearing. That's what he called it in his day. Now, the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, and verse 8, Jesus says this. He says, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So if we, one other way we show the world that we're his disciples, one way we've talked about in weeks past is that we love each other. That Christianity is about loving. It's not about judging. It's not about hate. It's about loving. The more we love each other, the more we show Jesus is real. But another way is, is that if we're so excited about our faith, if we share it with others, it shows others that we are his disciples. It's a way to bear fruit. And we've talked about many of the disciplines of growing in Christ. And I want you to know that what Jesus is saying is that sharing our faith is just as important to your spiritual growth as reading your Bible and prayer. It's all the same. It's all uh, important if you're going to grow to be this, uh, this well-disciplined follower of Jesus. Now, after Easter and a couple of weeks, starting a little bit after Mother's Day, we're going to do a, a, another sermon series of the disciple of, of how to take all these disciplines and be able to live a victorious life. And what are the components of not only being a disciple of Jesus, but to live victoriously. But we've got to get practicing these disciplines first. And sharing is just as important. And so fruit bearing or sharing what Jesus has done for us is just a natural outcome of you, the follower of Jesus, that's made Jesus the very center of your being. And Jesus says when we do this, that we glorify God when our sharing with others brings others to a saving relationship with Jesus. And maybe that's the reason that... Um, it warms us so much inside when we see 
another person come and say, I too have decided to follow Jesus. I too have asked him in my heart. I believe and I want him to be Lord of my life. I want to accept the, the forgiveness that he's offering. It warms our heart. And I think some here, and maybe you're thinking that, that gosh, that's a, you know, uh, to come and share that with the rest of the group, that is just so odd. And people are going to think, you know, I don't know what they're going to think of me, but people, it welcomes the rest of us. It gives us joy. And that's why, you know, uh, those baptism services are so joyful and we clap and we're excited. As I said, the only other best service is business meeting. But, uh, I, but baptism is just better than that. It's just a little bit above that. So, you know, it, it, it warms us because we know down inside it's bringing glory to Christ. It's bringing glory to God when we share our faith with other people. So first is that sharing our faith is, a, is to bear fruit for Christ. It's one thing that says to the world, we are Christian. Now, another thing I think to talk about in sharing our faith is that we need to allow the gospel message of Christ to be our source of power in witnessing. Let me share with you a verse from the letter to Romans that Paul wrote, and then I, I want to talk to you about this a little bit. Paul says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone, and who believes, first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. So I want to come back to what we said earlier, is come back to us overcoming our fears, our trepidations, our uncomfortableness, considering sharing our faith with other people. And that's one thing I think Paul is talking a little bit about here. Uh, he, Paul states that he is not ashamed of the gospel. And, you know, this is the first step in becoming more consistent witnesses for Jesus Christ. We've got to remember that when we do share Jesus with others, that, uh, you know, we're, you know it is, we're not just uh, sharing uh, something that nobody's ever heard about. We're not sharing something that is a little bit meaningful to us but may not be meaningful to others but that we're sharing with people the greatest story, the greatest news, the greatest event that's ever occurred in the history of this world. It is a powerful message. Is there any other message that you share where the living God came down to love us, died for us, and came back to life again? That is a powerful, powerful story. And, in fact, uh, Paul says that, uh, that the gospel is so powerful. He says the gospel is the power of God that brings salvation. And when he uses that word power, the, um, the Greek word for power here is the same word. It's the root word that we use for our English word, dynamite. The gospel, Paul says, is literally explosive. It's dynamite. It's, it's life-changing. It's sharing something with somebody else that can alter their existence and living in this world to the better. It will elevate them from wherever they are because they'll come in to what God and who God really wants them to be. And so one way to get over our, our kind of our insecurities about sharing Jesus is to trust in the power of God, is to trust in the power of the message that we're sharing, is to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit that's not just speaking to us, but speaking to others. It is the power of the gospel and the convictions of the Holy Spirit that saves others. Uh, we don't have to take on all the responsibility in witness. In fact, we really don't need to take on any of it. Uh, you know, I, we know we'll all slip up, even, you know, even us preacher types. I'll be in a, in, a, in a group of pastors, and somehow somebody will say, well, you know, we had a great uh, worship service last couple of weeks. He said, you know, we, uh, we saved 10 people. And I'll say, gosh, that's amazing. I've never saved anybody. And 
all the years I've been a pastor, we don't save anybody. Jesus saves. The Holy Spirit convicts. And so sometimes I, maybe we, we lack in our sharing because we have this weight of, gosh, what if I'm not as good about it? You know, I don't talk well. I don't know the words to say. But some of that burden needs to come off of us because uh, it's just not, we don't have to be the extroverted salesperson to be an effective witness. Paul says, Jesus says, we just need to be willing to be used by God used by the Holy Spirit. And we can do that anywhere we are, whatever job we're in, uh, whatever uh, whatever we're attempting to do. And then many times our efforts in witnessing and fruit bearing, this is an important part too, it's not always going to work out. It's going to be, that message is going to be rejected by somebody we share with. Um, or it's going to take a long time to bloom. A long time and we're going to get impatient um, I think it's true what one one, uh, one person said and I know I had one when I was out lived more out in the rural area and pastored uh, it, it's good for pastors and missionaries and all of us probably to have uh, one good thing about having a vegetable garden and planting our own vegetables or maybe a few tomato plants is that it uh, it teaches us patience is that you know, the, we, we plant the seeds or put the little plants in the ground, and the next week doesn't mean we're going to have tomatoes, does it? Uh, the next two weeks we're not going to have tomatoes. The next three weeks we're not going to have tomatoes. But if we, if we lovingly water that plant and, um, you know, the plant gets proper care, and uh, we can, even sometimes if we mess up and neglect it, still more than likely somewhere when it comes harvest time for that plant, that vegetable, we're going to have a tomato. We're going to have some green beans. We're going to have some corn. And it, it teaches us this, uh, this uh, patience, this uh, fruit bearing, this planting of seeds. And Jesus, in back to the Gospel of John in that 15th chapter, he reminds our we his disciples about this he says this remember what i told you a servant is not greater than his master if they persecute me they will persecute you also if they obey my teaching they will obey yours also they will treat you in this way because of my name for they do not know the one who sent me we got to realize <clears throat> that there's going to be times when we share the good news, that some people are just going to reject the message. It's going to happen. There'll be some, uh, and maybe you have family members, maybe you have friends, maybe you have some in your small groups that you have that uh, you've just been waiting, waiting, waiting. You get frustrated. Gosh, I, I know they're so close to accepting Christ, or this message doesn't seem to be getting through. And it can become frustrating. For some, it's going to take a long time for that, that message of the gospel, for the Spirit to get to that heart and say, this is the time you need to ask Christ in your heart. <clears throat> when our witnessing is rejected or it doesn't produce immediate results, uh, remember what Jesus just said. He said he himself was rejected. He himself taught many people and tried to get a lot of things spiritually across and was rejected in his own life. Well, you know, if you're rejected sometimes with your message, you're in good company. <laughs> it can happen to Christ, who had all the perfect words, <laughs> who was perfect, who always said the right thing at the right time, and he was rejected. Aren't we going to be sometime as well? I think Jesus wanted us to, to know that. But you know, part of growing as a Christian is, is learning sometimes to rejoice in our spiritual sufferings. And sometimes, and it's hard to, maybe sometimes when the, when the message is rejected or someone you know, puts us down for what we believe, uh, maybe a, a great response 
uh, is just in your prayer time next time, thank Christ, thank Jesus that he has allowed you to share in his suffering. That he's allowed you to, to glimpse a little bit that of what he suffered to bring this great news of salvation to you. That's a part of being a believer. And not everyone is going to hear and receive the good news the same. I, I love Jesus' parable about the sower. You can talk, talk about that in many different ways. But one thing Jesus said as he explained the parable, he said, you know, the sower is the one that, that shares God's word. And he's throwing these seeds of the gospel everywhere. And that's kind of how the Palestinian farmer did. He would just throw, you know, they didn't have rows and neat little rows and, and prepare the soil. They just threw it everywhere. And uh, they knew somewhere the seed would grow. But um, Jesus said in the parable, some of those seeds are just going to fall on the hard path, aren't they? Some of those seeds are going to fall on a hard path and they're never going to penetrate. They're never going to grow. Some gospel seeds fall on hard hearts. Doesn't mean that one day those hearts can't be softened. Some of those seeds are going to get in thorny ground and weedy ground and, and they're going to be choked out by the cares of the world. Some people are going to hear the gospel, but they just think other things in life uh, are more important than Jesus for a long time. And they're going to get choked out until they realize one day that Jesus is the most important decision they'll ever make and the other things of life are going to fall into place. So again, don't take on so much responsibility. Just share. And realize too that this, these next two weeks, are a great season in the Christian year if you haven't been sharing your faith to begin, to risk, to step out to share your faith and consistently be faithful as we're just two weeks away from Easter. Um, here's three things you can do right here, right here at Easter time connected with Fairview. Um, Alan mentioned it. Invite people to our Palm Sunday cantata next week. 11 o'clock, we'll have <clears throat> orchestra pieces up here. Um, we'll have a choir singing and the... Um, the, our music ministry will share the good news of Jesus Christ in song uh, in a melodious way that many times reaches the heart. Invite somebody new just to uh, do that. I, a couple of years ago, invited one of the golfers I, I played with. I don't think he's probably been to church in years. I said, come here to our Christmas cantata. And uh, he came and brought his family and his grandkids and and uh, he enjoyed that experience, and although he hasn't been back here yet, it's opened the door for us to talk more about faith um, on the golf course. Yeah, that's hard to do when I'm fussing and cussing about my shots all the time, you know. So uh, he's, uh, you know, he, he, listens, he listens pretty well. But, you know, it's just that, that introduction. So invite somebody to that. Invite somebody to the Monday Thursday dinner, 6 o'clock. Everybody likes to eat. And you bring them in here at 7 for the service. And that service is reading the scripture of Jesus' passion, of, of him going to the cross and his suffering, and singing great hymns about it. It's a powerful service because it really focuses on what Jesus did for us. Uh, and I think they would um, resonate with that. Um, second of all, and maybe even do it right now if you're one that takes notes or jots down things or either put it in your mind, think of, write down one person that you know who needs to enter into a life-saving relationship with Jesus. Um, I encourage you to write that note on a piece of paper, write it in the margin of your Bible, but keep it with your Bible. Keep it with what, you know, when you read, what the word that you read, what you have when you pray. And then um, I want you to, to just uh, pray for that person daily. Pray that God will give you an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus with them. And don't quit praying for them. Don't quit sharing. Uh, don't quit caring for them until they accept Christ. And then you can, you know, put a, a joyous line through their hand and pray for somebody else. But the power of prayer, the power of, 
of, of thinking and, and looking for ways that God's going to, I guarantee if you do that, God is going to put this person, they're not already in your path, he's going to give you opportunities to share. Um, and then a third one I thought of, pretty simple, is uh, take the sermons of Fairview on Sunday morning. They're on our website, they're on YouTube, and um, share them on your Facebook page. Just uh, share and say, hey, this was the sermon at church Sunday. Um, you know, view it. Look at it. Um, meant something to me. Um, this sermon's pretty boring, but you might like it. I didn't. I mean, whatever whatever you want to say. But, you know, share. You know, put, put the message on Facebook. It goes out to your friends, and they may share it. It's a way to share the good news. Three, you know, there's ways if we think about it. The thing is, practice practice this discipline uh, in our in our age in our day of sharing of sharing your faith now one way that we share together our faith as believers is through communion you see the stations that are set up here and um, we we share with each other through Christ to remind us what Jesus has done for us and we have these powerful symbols of the bread which is Christ's body given for us. We have the powerful symbol of the juice, the cup, that reminds us that Christ came to rescue us by dying on the cross for our sin and being raised to new life again. It's a wonderful, powerful reminder. And we come together often. We'll do it again on Monday, Thursday, um, just uh, to remember but also to share with others who may not know the Lord, um, have you taken in Jesus into your life? Have you accepted what he's done for you in the sharing and the giving of his body and the blood on the cross? And so I'm going to pray, and um, Tammy and I are going to be over here. I think Cricket's going to be over here, and Talmadge. Okay, great. It's going to be over here to uh, share communion. We're going to offer that to you. Come and Take the bread, the body of Christ, dip it into the cup, the blood of Christ, and remember or um, think about sharing this with others. But let's, have, let's have communion together. Maybe it be a holy time for you, good time to confess. Uh, it's a good time just to draw close to God in any way that you want to. So let's pray, and then I invite you to come, uh, come to the table together on either side. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us a story to tell, for uh, allowing us to be a part of your great plan. Uh, God, may we just, uh, we just want to see others have the peace and the joy and the, um, the security of eternity that we have. So God, give us the words to say. Uh, give us the caring to care so that others may know of you. Help us to bear fruit as we come to your table now, Lord. Forgive us and remind us again of the power of your story. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.